teeth. Long time, no see. No time. Oh, long time. I about to say no time. Long time, no see. Welcome to another episode of All Elite with Keeks. Thank you guys for tuning in. Before I get started, I just want to let the public know, let everybody know that I just want y'all to be mindful that I am important at my job, apparently. So um, we are in a time, especially in the state of Texas, if you are working for the government, um, we have been in mandatory overtime. So I have to stay a little bit longer. So it causes me to not be able to do an episode. So it's going to be a period, especially during this time, that I won't be consistently every Monday is because of my actual job. So I just want y'all to be mindful of that. I do have a life outside of content creation. And so I do have to tend to my OT or I won't get my money. You know what I'm saying? Because I got babies to feed and family to take care of and help. So it requires me to stay a little bit longer at my actual job. So um, that's why you didn't see me last week. Um, so I'd be on standby just in case. So it's not that I purposely choose not to do a Monday or nothing like that. I just wanted to get that out the way. It's because of my actual job. I am required to meet a mandatory overtime at this time. Time, um, in this period in the state of Texas because, you know, election is coming up, things may be changing as far as like legisla legislation and things like that. So it's causing a big rift. Okay, so that's what's going on with me. So it ain't got nothing to do with it. I don't feel like it. I know, you know, I hear the chatters, but it has 100% to do of my job. OK, so be patient with me. I promise I will be back consistent until, of course, when election season is over in the state of Texas. Hopefully things will go back to normal schedule at my position. So that's what's going on. OK, so now that I got that out the way, I feel like I shouldn't have to explain that to y'all, but I'm going to go ahead and do it because that's, you know, very professional of me. And just in case people are listening, like, what kids don't do it every month? I have a job. You know what I'm saying? I, I got a duty to fulfill. And it's election year. And um, you know what I'm saying? The Ted Cruz and all of that stuff, like that stuff is coming up and it's interfering with my position. So we have to meet certain criteria and things and a lot of shenanigans. I'm not gonna give y'all too much of what I do for a living, but if you know, yeah. So that's what's going on for me me um but yeah so let's get into some social pop culture things before we get into the main topic for the show which we will be talking about as far as AEW moving into the new direction um allegedly we'll get into that but first again since i brought up election season we are like almost six weeks away into actual election, you know, um, Kamala Harris, she did accept the CNN invitation for a debate for October 23rd. We haven't heard word of Trump if he is going to engage with her again for a part two in debate. I feel like he should, being that the time has been very limited during this year's election. It's been a weird year as far as presidential election, but I feel like they should do one more so people can have it on their minds who to elect. But, you know, again, like I always say on here, um, you don't have to be big on politics, but just do your research because this is very impactful and it's determined your children's future. I have kids and their future is important. I want to retire by the age of Lord State of Science 60. I don't want to work for the rest of my life and things like that because the way things are headed, it is not going to get any better. So make sure, you know, you click on her website. She has uh, her policies and what she is going to be informing and standing for and fighting for for us. Um, you can go on, I guess, Trump website or whatever. It's all a bunch of rebuttal events and stuff like that. It's a bunch of nonsense, but, you know, I'm not here to tell you who to choose, but, you know, common sense ain't common. So just use your common sense for once this time because um, 
it's going to be like it was the last four years and there's going to be a lot of cleaning up to do. Um, but not only that, your local votes do matter as well for the state and the city that you stay in. So make sure you know their policies and what's going forward in your city as well as your state. Uh, I know it's the big thing out here in the state of Texas as far as the Senate. Um, and also in the city of Dallas, uh, the, the local votes and stuff like that. I'm, I'm part of a blue city, so um, very well aware of what's going on out here. You can also see what's going on um, in your city and also your state. If you go to the Kamala Harris website, all you got to do is click in your zip code and it'll show you different, you know, policies that they have going on as far as like the locals of issues. So make sure that you do your homework and you're well aware and also make the right decisions. OK, don't allow a meme to be a reason why you vote for somebody, because I know as funny as that man can possibly be. But at the same time. We know what he stands for. It's not us working class, middle class, or the poor class. It's definitely just for rich people and rich people only, okay? Um, and you might feel like, you know, Kamala Harris is a Zionist because of where she stands as far as what's going on uh, with Israel and Palestine. But, you know, she has to keep it smart, especially in politics. You can't say the right things and you can't say the wrong thing so um don't allow that to make you anti-black because it's a lot that's going on as i'm saying um so just do your homework do you do your knowledge as uh what's the name said do your googles okay so make sure you be well aware vote 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 that is very important six weeks away it's very important okay all right so next up on pop social news okay Right, so the feds have locked the nasty man up. They locked him up. Um, the arrest was made. Uh, they got him in the lobby. Uh, TMZ released the footage last week of them, uh, the feds basically closing on in on him and making the arrest. They locked the nasty man up. Now, it's a lot of misinformation going on because, as you can see, the lovely rest in power to Miss Kim Porter. Um, it's the book that's out there that's on Amazon. That book was not written by her. It's a lot of false information in that. And then you should be, you know, common sense should kick in because that book is 60 pages long. And then the cover of it is just did our research on it. It is written by a white male that used AI and he's a conspiracy theorist. Yeah, it's basically a brochure. He's a conspiracy theorist, and he also used AI to write this book. And that's why AI needs it. That needs to be gone because it, that is very dangerous. And unfortunately for, and I'm speaking to my people, black people, all it takes is for some misinformation to spread just like that. And it's just all, everybody will believe it. Nobody wants to do the research. Nobody wants to, you know, go into debt. But that Kim Porter book is not the actual book. It is falsified. It is um, written with AI and by a white man that is full of conspiracy theories. He got most of his information from people online, from bloggers. So that's why it's important to not get your information from bloggers. Get them from actual journalists that went to college and got their degree in journalism. Okay. That is very, very important. But also, I also want to enlighten because some people you know we i've read the indictment all 14 pages y'all know i am into crime criminal anything read 14 pages of the indictment and um you know people are making jokes of certain things yes the 14 bottles no not the 14 the thousand bottles of Johnson and Johnson baby oil is absurd. Like that is very diabolical of a person to have that many bottles of baby oil. But outside of that, some people are making jokes and making assumptions as is as if it's like a consensual threesome or a big orgy party or something like that. It's definitely nothing like that. If you read the indictment. The things was going on for four days and then it got to a point where you get so exhausted that he 
higher doctors to, you know, give IV and things like that. And uh, women against their will, they're being um, drugs. And um, the only thing that they haven't confirmed is if the victims were minors. Um, but as far as like prostitution and things like that, that has been confirmed. Um, so uh, keep in mind that it is racketeering, also um, trafficking, assault and things like that. So it's not just he's in trouble for quote unquote orgy because that's not what it was. It was more than that as uh, actual crimes being committed at this party. And, um, and it's, of course, it's a racketeering because he is over, you know, Bad Boys is considered an organization. So being in New York, y'all know New York is very familiar with racketeering. Uh, that's how they brought the mob down. Um, that's how they bring down uh, drug lords and things like that. So, um, y'all, it, it's not like how it is in Georgia because again, the YSL case was is that's their first racketeering thing. But New York is very familiar, and then being that it's the Southern District of New York, and um, if you into criminal law, and if you went to school to criminal law, we already know about. The Southern District of New York, they do not play. They have like the top of the line prosecutors and they do not play when it comes to these RICO charges. OK, so, yeah, they, they finally got him. And I know people talking about some this person next, this person next, which I have to understand when it comes to a racketeering. Um, the feds was involved and they did a six month investigation, which means they could possibly be all these people that y'all are saying our next are probably the ones that cooperated okay um it was already kind of confirmed that cbj was one of the ones that cooperated with the fed so um it, it ain't know who's next or he's snitching his way out of it he's done and it's really a, a matter of just how many years but he's done like he can try to snitch his way out of it but he can't because they have footages they they have enough to to you know, stitches him. It's just a matter of how much is, and he's already in his fifties, so he's pretty much going to be spending the rest of his life in there. The only one that I can see probably getting in trouble outside of this is probably Young Miami, being that she was with him in the Miami home, and then the charge that he had as far as like sex trafficking. If she is the Maxine to his, you know, Jeffrey, I. I've seen, you know what I'm saying? So that's the only one I could see getting in trouble outside of him. But um, it will most likely be people that's on his payroll. So all of this, you know, people were trying to prey on other people's downfall because they was at a party. You got to understand it was a different type of party. You had the business type party, the consensual parties, and then you had this other stuff that he was doing outside those parties. And then you um, also... He was denied bail twice. It made sense. Why? Because, you know, he had a pattern. When they raided the home in L.A., he flew to Miami. When they raided the home in Miami, he flew to New York. So you already got a pattern of moving. And then on top of that, you were still contacting victims. You were still, you know, I will pay this. So you kind of have a pattern. So, of course, they was going to deny it. But... We can all come up with things wrong with Harris, but you know, she ain't an actual bassist, so I'm going to go with her. <laughs> smart man, smart, smart. Yeah, so yeah, I just want to, you know, share that, like, you know, just be mindful. Some of the jokes has been corny. Um, you know, don't retweet those folks, those internet comedians, they corny. A lot of these people are corny with the jokes, so. I feel like justice will be served. Um, I say it all the time. People, you know, I'm a person of faith. You know what I'm saying? And I say it all the time. When people start thinking that they God, God start reminding people that you only human. You can only get away with things so long. Like you reap what you sow. You sowed in greed. You sowed in power. You sold in wicked things and now you're reaping them. That's just how it is. If you believe in God, you already know how that go. You reap what you sow. So 
That's all that is, and that's all it's gonna be. Now, next up in in sports, let's lighten up the mood a little bit. Saturday, we saw some amazing things like Shador. I wish y'all had the video. I should have sent my producer the video. I wasn't even thinking. But Shador Sanders threw probably one of the most beautiful Hail Marys I've seen in a while to tie the ball game. What a great game. It was a very fun, entertaining game between Colorado and Baylor. We love entertainment when it comes to our physicality and our football. That's what makes football football because it's entertaining as well as very athletic. It was a beautiful play. He trusted his receivers. They made the catch in the rain. And then during overtime, Travis Hunter did the most clutch stop and made do fumble the ball right at the end zone. It, it was just a beautiful play, very entertaining, very symptomatic. If you didn't catch that game Saturday, I know some people will sleep. I ain't going to say no names. Some people will sleep. You know what I'm saying? But it was a great, great game. Okay. Uh, catch the replays. It's been circulating on TikTok and on Twitter. So it's been circulating all weekend. Also, I want to say to this Longhorns, Archie Manning. Archie Manning is the future. White folk quarterback is coming back. Okay. White folk is coming back. Archie Manning. And he even jogged like them. You know, the men in got the, that ugly running. They jog so ugly. He he got that whole, like, you know, they run with their shoulders. He run just like the He do that little. <laughs> But white folk is coming back. They coming back to take their position as quarterbacks because apparently, you know, they were saying that quarterbacks can't read defenses no more. And I was and I was not trying to make a wild take. <laughs> that was start a whole race war. But white folk is coming back taking their QB positions. They telling us to get back at wide receivers, get back at running backs. <laughs> corners <laughs> but um yeah he's definitely the future uh, of football indeed uh he's gonna get us the national championship i like i'm speaking it into existence all longhorns we gonna get that national championship with archie manny archie and he have a he has a golden retriever name too oh he he's destined it's it's written it's written, nepotism, my type of nepotism. He comes from a great family of football. Okay, so he's going to be all right. Also, um, in sports, WNBA, of course, the playoffs have, you know, it started on Sunday. Uh, I saw my fever versus Connecticut. Uh, Kaylin Clark did not have a great game. I could tell that she had the jitters. You know, this is her first playoff, WNBA playoff at that. That girl going to knock. She almost took my girl eye out. I saw it. She almost took her eye out with them damn long ass nails. They need to ban them nails. Mm -mm. She said, you know how you like you put your hand up to kind of stop them from getting the ball. She put her hand up and then clawed her in the eye and black my girl eye like that. I appreciate that. But, you know, Kayla and the dog, so she got her back. She knocked her contact out. Her eye for an eye. That's what happened on <laughs> her eye for an eye happened. But they should shake back. They, uh, the next game is this Wednesday. Um, Give us a final finals prediction. My producer want to know finals prediction. Um, it may be Liberty. If it's not Liberty, then it may be the Aces versus Minnesota, or or WNBA might play it smart because viewership try to find a way to get Fever up in there in the finals. I'm not saying that they're gonna win, but just get them in there because. Today, an article basically say, like, if Kaylin is out, 
they're not going to get that same viewership. I don't think that that's necessarily true. It might be still some of, you know, the casuals that she brought in still look at it, but probably won't bring, you know, bring as much as the playoff game did because even with during the Eagles in the Saints game going into the Cowboys game, that viewership of the Connecticut Sun and the Fever still reached that meal, 1.5 most. You know what I'm saying? So either it's I feel like I feel like it's gonna end up being Minnesota though, because Minnesota has been playing really, really well from what I've seen. Um and Liberty is just dominating Aces. They had like they're really relying on Asia. Um, they haven't been as dominant as they was last year. So it will take a real miracle for them to pull it off. But, um, yeah, it, 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 it could go either way. I can see it, like, on a business standpoint, standpoint, they'll put Fever in there just, you know, just to gain that, the, the keep that casual viewership. But... I don't see I don't see Minnesota not being in it because they're the Lynx has been they've been playing playing from from what I've seen they've been playing playing so maybe it'll be Liberty versus Lynx I don't know that's just my prediction but we'll see it so far because the Wednesday again it'll be favorite I'm gonna be watching AW and my Caitlin so and then uh. Last but not least, well, not last, but I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, NFL, it's been a weird start for a lot of our teams, y'all, especially mine. I don't know what's going on. I don't, they cannot, I don't know. Everybody's been starting off weird, especially in the NFC. I don't know what's going on with us. Um, maybe, I don't know. We've been playing drunk. I don't know. I just don't know. I'm just not, my stress level has been high. Like my mom is an Eagles fan and she 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 not pleased with the win. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah, it's it's a lot of injuries too. You can tell that it's affecting this season. But it looks like Patrick Mahomes is going back. Like we can't beat the refs in them. Like it's Falcons could have won that game, but I don't know. I they going back of apparently, unfortunately. They going back. It's just a matter of who in the NFC is going. Cause we all looking, we all looking like we lost our minds. I don't know. Everybody just tripping. Especially my team. Cowboys get it together. Okay. Y'all making me pull my hair out of my head, bro. I can't I can't keep taking these losses, okay? But anyway, so yeah, that's enough for the political, social, and pop culture and sports news. So we're going to get started with the show. Hit it. Monday night, you know what that means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what that means. Realists on the grab scene, queen of the enemies. All elite with keys. Uh, straight out of Dallas with it. Dynamite fuel. She lit it. Standing on women business. Going all out. Let's get it. Keep it respectful though. Don't want that brawl out. We just talking fallout. Storylines and call outs. Say what's the word, kicks? I know y'all heard kicks on air with the facts, not the rumors from dirt sheets. If you's a real collider, then let's ride with her. A real live winner. We going live with her. Yeah. All elite with kicks, yeah, yeah, yeah. All elite with kicks. All elite with kicks, yeah, yeah, yeah. All elite with kicks. Welcome, 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 welcome. So, welcome to again another AEW All Elite with Kicks show on today again i am keeks yes you can find me every monday but like i said in the beginning you know we are in election season um and of course uh, me what i do for a living it um allows me to um do more overtime than i usually do so 
I won't be consistent on some Mondays, especially around this season. So just bear with me. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, money has to be made. You know what I'm saying? The money has to be made. Okay. So I'm not abandoning, you know, I'm not saying, oh, no, I don't feel like it or nothing like that. It's, it's just my occupation. Okay. So got to eat. You know what I'm saying? I got kids. I got mouth to feed. I got mouth to feed. Y'all heard that? Before? The TikTok. Y'all heard that lady, she was yelling. She was like, I got my mouth to be. I got <laughs> okay, whatever. I guess I'm the only one that heard it. Okay. Hmm. <coughs> Oosh. <coughs> but yeah, so um being that I have been keeping up with um, the news as far as AEW. Now, it is rumored, a possibility um, has been circulating, um, hasn't been official yet, but AEW new possible deal is rumored to be four years, the guarantee three additional one. It has not been said allegedly, but that's, you know, the rumor. Uh, it's also been rumored that it possibly the pay-per-views will be on max. And then it's rumored uh, that Rampage will possibly be on Fox as FS1, okay? These are all speculations. What we do know so far that a deal has been made, we just don't know the, the, the what is the actual deal, okay? Now, with that being said, it's things that I wanted to talk about and point out this episode. So this episode may not be too long, but I just want to get to the point of things, okay? One thing's for sure, and one thing's for certain, that AEW is not dying anytime soon, like some people will want it to. And I've seen that the rumors of the speculation is causing a lot of content creators to crash the freak out like you're crashing out because the alternative is not dying like you speculated throughout your entire content creation career uh that jd from new york guy mr shorty my short 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 stuff did a whole crash out like i saw it circulating on twitter he was yelling and and a bunch of things i saw big accounts was trying to figure out they don't fill in the seats. They don't do this, but yet they still get a deal. Y'all not as smart as y'all thought y'all were, weren't ya? Weren't ya? As much as Eric Bischoff talks so much crap about AEW, even he said whatever the deal is is still good for wrestling, the business. And the only reason why he said that because he can still pick on it because he got mouths to feed. You know what I'm saying? That's why some of them were like, yeah, we want AEW to continue because so we can trash talk it because it's bringing us money. Prior to you got people that's crashing out because they written it off. AEW was supposed to die in 2019. It was supposed to die in 2020. It was supposed to die in 2021. It was supposed to die in 2022. It was supposed to die. So you get what I'm saying? It was, it, it was being supposed to be dead. It was supposed to die like it never died before. And it's not dying no time soon. You know, the good thing is more people get to have jobs. More people get to live out their dreams. It's still hope for people that's in indie wrestling or a different promotion that is able to, you know, flip flop, jump ship or whatever. Keep the thing coping steady. It's good for the business. And I'm not saying, I'm not one of them that say it's good for the business because I want to see my friend on there or something like that. It's actually good for the business because it might not work over there in the E. It might not work over there in TNA. It might not work for you in NWA. It might not work in the, in like, it might just not work, but you have an alternative that has ROH as well as AEW. Now, you can say what you want to say about ROH, but these people are still going to get paid. And ROH still pulls from indie wrestlers to get paid. So, 
ROH has not died. In fact, ROH has made more money than they ever had since Tony Khan bought it. So even though you don't feel like you see something, something is happening. It might not be what we all, you know, grew up on as far as ROH and what ROH used to stand for, but the money is being made. You know what I'm saying? People are being booked and people get to be on a schedule that they choose to be. And the pay-per-views are doing really, really well. The buy-ins are doing really, really well than they ever have done before. And he has admitted, especially, um, who was that that asked it? It was the, one of the journalists that asked him the question in regards to ROH. The plans for for the future, like, and, you know, he has said that, you know, he is working on putting people in position so ROH can be better showcased than things like that. You know, we just got to be patient. I think he's just more concerned and focused on this deal. And once this deal is set, then he can get the ball rolling as far as creativity and changes and things like that. But it's no point in trying to do this if you don't have this together. Let's make sure we get this money first. And then we can go from A to B to C to D to E. You know what I'm saying? So that's one. It's good for all wrestling. Number two, if anything, I've learned, and this ain't even just AEW, it's with WWE because, again, WWE SmackDown has moved to USA, and Raw is going to be on Netflix. If anything that I've learned as far as wrestling and how the networks view wrestling, I know that they view wrestling as just a filler spot. Is a filler spot and it helps them make a little bit more money to fund the things that they want to fund. But they also have to make sure that they put in their end of the deal. I say that because I sat there on Twitter and since SmackDown been on USA, Fox has been shading WWE on Twitter. Like they, you've never seen Fox post viewership football just recently we just got 4.4 mil on a friday we didn't want to get rid of this we didn't want to get rid of wrestling we don't do that two mil no more look what the college football is bringing us on a friday 4.4 million the little last one it was like we got three point some mil. Like, like, what if I started posting viewership? <laughs> okay, like, and this is the way that, I, and they tell it like, this is why we do want to get rid of this brand. They're not making us the television viewership. They're not hitting the demos and things like that. And as far as like um, AWC. Tony Khan was smart enough to, you know, we not going to be, you know, we can't make the two mil, but we can get past 800K and that's what they do. That's what they do. We about to go past the 800K. Or we go past the, uh, um, and for Rampage, the deal was, I believe it was over 200K. So they need it. So I don't know whatever their standard is for this new deal, but they know that they can't get a meal. We know that only AEW caters to only AEW fans. And WWE only, they should start, but the reality is wrestling, it doesn't matter if it's WWE or AEW, it caters to their fans. Like they don't draw casual fans anymore. It doesn't matter what brand it is. It doesn't draw casual fans. Like the only reason, you know, of course, casuals will watch WrestleMania. That's not, uh, you know, that's childhood. Like people know when WrestleMania is, it's, there's no sport at that time. No, no football, um, basketball playoffs about to start. So they don't watch WrestleMania. Okay. Hold on now. So, um, 
They're going to watch WrestleMania. So that's why I just learned that networks just view wrestling as a filler spot. Like Warner Brothers, we know Warner Media, they, they're cheap. They're cheap because, you know, they did a lot of layoffs and stuff like that. Things are not working as far as like some movies. Some movies didn't make no money back and things like that. And then WWE, they did, you know, the smart move to go to Netflix. They were tired of getting beat by the NFL, you know, um, and of course, Fox did not re-sign them. They didn't want to keep them back. They they wasn't making them no money. So it's filler spots. And and they both of them are, you know, technically in, in my opinion, they're doing a good job, you know, playing it safe. They they know their place. Um but as y'all could tell, they both. In a way, they trying to allude that we are part of sports. Like, we know Tony Khan is part of the Jaguars organization, and um, he includes AEW with Jaguars stuff. Like, they recently had, like, a, a wrestling match uh, before the Jaguars game started and stuff like that. And then you have WWE. They've been making championship belts for different football team. And uh, Seth Rollins, Sunday, was uh, he did something at the Chicago Bears game. It was very cringe. Like, so they trying to win like actual sports fans so they can get them to watch wrestling, but nobody's going to do that. Like the belts are cool though. I'll get like the championship belts. They cool. They WWE tomorrow. They're going to make their money off of that. That's smart. But having them go to a weekly show. No, that's not happening. They're not going to do that. Not, they're not going to tune in. And since SmackDown been on USA, the demo went from two to one. Because one, people don't have cable. And quiet as they kept, they, the person that they got a champion. That's not my business. Yeah, that, that's for WWE content creators, but whatever. Okay. And then third, my third point, if AEW was to die, like just say, Warner Media was just like, you know what? We don't want nothing to do with AEW. And then AEW couldn't find a network to, you know, be their partner. If it was to die, the only people that will benefit from its death will be the indie scene. Like the indie scene will, will benefit from it because then you have more exciting bookings that they can do. Because if you take a look at the indie scene now, I'm not saying that it's dead, but it's not what it once was before NXT and, uh, well, Black and Go NXT and also um, ROH and also AEW. So the indie thing would benefit a lot. But then a lot of people will lose a lot of jobs. And, you know, you have some people that are able to go to New Japan, You but New Japan barely got the, the fun yuns. You know what I'm saying? And then... WWE don't want a lot of them. They they only want a few select of them, but not a lot of them. And then you got TNA. I mean, they, some of them can do something with TNA. And then you got NWA, AAA, CMLL. Like it's it's you have some alternatives, but it's just like I want the fun young. And not, that alternative is giving out the fun yuns. You know what I'm saying? So if it was a die, the only thing will benefit is the indie scene. But it will be people that's jobless. It's some people that will end up having to go back. You know? But some people want that because they want to keep a narrative. Because they made a name for themselves by bashing AEW. Some people wouldn't even have the numbers or the viewership or the popularity if it wasn't for slandering AEW. Like, that's all their claim to fame is slandering AEW. Outside of that, what else do they have to talk about? If AEW was to die, a lot of podcasters will be jobless or the clout will be gone. So that's third. And then the next one I want to bring up was 
it's always the thing that I've noticed, especially around October and December, especially when it comes to AEW, as far as creativity, um, with like the storylines and the pay-per-views and the dynamites and things like that. And I say it time and time again, October through December is always like that testing period for AW because that's that is the period that they get to certain stories come to an end. Some stories begin, some things they get to test out just to see the reaction or the crowd reaction. You got to have those type of periods just to test the waters to see what, what will stick because we know that the spring and the summer is a big that's the big period for wrestling entertainment, not just, you know, WWE, but AEW as well. That's a big period for them, a creative period. So they have to have that those fall and winter months while it's football season. NBA season is approaching. Like they have to have those seasons to just test things out because they cannot compete with real sports. Let's just... Keep, like, keep that in mind. Wrestling does not even see the greater scale of what the NFL, NBA does. So just keep that in your head. They cannot compete with them. If it was the only time they was able to is when Stone Cold Steve Austin was champion. But they cannot compete with the NFL. It's like nobody can compete with the NFL. Nobody. They're, they are way up there. Like, and I said it before, NBA is trying to, but they done pass, surpassed NBA on a greater scale. Surpassed it. So spring and summer is the, the hottest period for wrestling. But like I said, I give it five years, they're going to have to worry about the summertime because, again, the WNBA is getting casuals. Caitlin Clark alone has outdrawn a Raw. Okay? Her games alone. Give it like five years. You got Paige coming, Juju coming, Flo J coming. Like, it's different. You know what I'm saying? Like, women's basketball is growing. So, that summertime is going to be scary for wrestling, too. They don't want to they, – they try to collab with real sports because they can't compete with it. These TV deals will pick up a real sport before they pick up a wrestling. AEW better be praying, praying. And thank God that NBA did not want to stay with TNT. Okay? Because NBA want more money. So that's what I'm saying. Like, USA, I mean, of course they was going to pick up SmackDown. They bread and butter is locked up. Ty Chrisley is locked up. Y'all know that was USA bread and butter. Law and Order SBU and Ty Chrisley are they two bread and butters. Ty Chrisley was coming on on Friday nights. Of course they was going to pick them up. It was smart to pick them up. They the main man was in jail. He's currently in jail. They was like, we got to get something. Yeah, we'll take a SmackDown. Yes, sure. Take the load up off of, we was We tired of trying to compete with NFL. We know that's a loss. <laughs> 30 years. They was tired. So, of course, they was going to pick up Friday nights. Then people can look at USA on Fridays. And then I heard that they trying to add a three-hour SmackDown. That's a bad idea. But, again, they bread and butter is in jail. Todd Chrisley is in jail. They have to take that show off. That hurt them. That hurt them a lot. So, 
again, the main point of today's episode, whatever the deal is, I hope, you know, <laughs> whatever the deal is, um, it's good for the wrestling business. It's good for the hardcore fans. And you got to give AEW some grace, especially during the October, December period. Like, people have just been like, I, I've been watching it, but I don't watch and tweet as much on Dynamite because it has gotten to a point, it's gotten so annoying. And people cry over every single thing. If something that you fantasy book did not go your way, they start crying. And I've been an AW fan since day one, and I recognize that around this time, after AW All Out, I know they have other AW pay per views coming up, but I do know after All Out is always that breathing period for them because of the Jaguars, <laughs> Sony Khan, and they'll have to focus up NFL season. You know, it's the NFL season, and I know it's that period to where they test things out. I love um, the 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 Fantastic Four uh, off of well they were the umpires they not the umpires no more than my dogs I love them and they cannot stand the outrunners and I'm just like outrunners are great and I I probably was one of the first that thought it. I was just like they need to do something with them it's nothing like because their characters. It's so funny, but they're actually good in the ring. Like I like they sarcasm, they they sarcasm, their energy. So outrunners, not saying that you have to, if you put the belt on them, just make them transitional. They don't have to be, you know what I'm saying? They don't have to be like long reigning champions. Just put the belts on them for to keep the tag team division afloat and keep it entertaining and things like that. Um I know some AEW fans, we expect real grass all the time. Uh, I know we want less entertainment. We don't want anything to, you know, identify with WWE because what makes WWE makes them WWE and what makes AEW, AEW. I get that 100%. But the best time to do kind of the goofy shit is during the fall and winter. That is the perfect time to do it because... We don't want that during when it's grass time, when it's during the spring, summer. You know what I'm saying? We don't want that. So the best time is to do it during this time. Let them do what they do a little bit. Um, but yeah, it, uh, I know so far Daniel Garcia hasn't signed yet. We do know that um, Penta um, has signed with WWE. Ray Phoenix is still under contract with AEW, so that's going to be very interesting on what Tony Khan decides to do. Will he be a boss and kind of put his foot down a little bit, or will he just let him go? Um, all I know is I'm, I'm happy for them wherever they go. I know some people are hurt by it or how it came about. Um, it was pretty messed up, but at the same time, you know, people are going to do what they do. Um they want to be the best tag team in the world. And I, you know, I have no, I ain't got nothing against that. They've been in every promotion. Um, and uh, they probably just want to, you know, test it out just to say that they've been to WWE. You know what I'm saying? Uh, people have their goals. And um, Lucha Brothers probably, you know what they are. Probably the first Lucha Doors to do that, to be... Tag team champions, they were ROH tag champions, AEW tag champions, AAA tag champions. What uh they have they have a great resume in wrestling. A great re resume in wrestling. So I'm you know, I'm happy for them. I, I hope to see them um book for WrestleMania. And I'm going to watch. I'm going to uh, root for them at a pay-per-view because, you know, I casually watch uh, WWE during their pay-per-view periods. Um, I did catch a SmackDown. I was confused by the Roman and Cody movie. I didn't know what was going on with that. I was like, what What movie is this? What is this? I was confused.
But yeah, so um during the spring and summer is the real grass. Um just you know, just 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 enjoy AEW for what it is around this period. Uh y'all are a lot of y'all are getting yourself too worked up. Y'all getting too worked up to the point where you can't enjoy it. Just enjoy it for what it is, y'all. Um, some of y'all are too serious. Loosen up. It's a okay. I'm pretty certain, you know. Will is back there, you know, cooking up something. The rest of the creatives is back there cooking up something. It all will work out, okay? Because they're five years now. They're approaching a sixth year. And um, give them grace a little bit. You know, it's okay to criticize them when it's bad. But as I look at it, especially during football season, this is the season where they just kind of breathe and just test things out and just do things just to see what it looks like, just to see how the crowd reacts to it, just to see, you know, what kind of engagement it gets online, just to see what the viewership looking like if they on TV or if this angle happened and things like this so we can build from there because you have to build from something. And that's a lot of times what they do. I know uh, Grand Slam is coming up. People, are, I saw people are upset about it being Hangman versus Jeff Jarrett. Like they didn't build that before even All In happened. That made sense. Um, who else? Uh, Brian Danielson and uh, um, what's my guy? British guy. I can't think of his name right now. He won the um, best announcer, a uh, color commentator at PWI. Nigel. Nigel, yeah. Nigel. Daniel said in Nigel. That makes sense. Young Bucks versus basically Aussie Open, but not really Aussie Open. It's um, Will Ospreay and Kyle Fletcher. That's going to be really good. I saw that it was Okada versus Sammy, and that made me scratch my head. That was the only one that kind of made me scratch my head. I don't know. I did this when I seen it. I kind of, I don't know. We'll see how that go, though. I, I saw that it would be Serena Deeb and Britt Baker. All right, maybe Serena's trying to save her. Maybe Serena's trying to help. I don't know. But yeah, Grand Slam is coming up, so we're going to see how that goes. Um, it should be a great show. I, I'm a, you know, they always made sure that Grand Slam, uh, you know, be a par. So I'm not going to be too much uh, as far as the card. Uh, I'm pretty certain it will deliver. So. That's that. And then I will be, if I, if I don't have to do any OC, I promise you, which I don't. I don't think I don't next Monday. So I should be back on here most definitely. But I do want to say, again, AW having a new TV deal is great for the wrestling business, whether you like them or not. Um. It just shows that wrestling is very much still alive and um, it's thriving in its own way as far as the entertainment um, and, or, or sports entertainment, wherever, you know. But it's good for all wrestling. It's good for the wrestlers to maintain their livelihoods, to keep a job. And, uh, and I like the whole flip-flop and I like that when people, you know, they choose that was at WWE, they choose to sign with AEW, then you got some people that was at AEW, they choose to sign with WWE. That's good. We see it all the time in NFL when people trade teams and, and, and go to different teams. It happens in NBA. It happens in WNBA. It happens. It happens. That's what that's that's good business. It's good for business. It's good for business. Um, Before I go, um, this big man made a statement Apparently, he is not liking what Netflix has done with the documentary, which means that it's the thing. It's not 
is not altered by WWE. That's that's what we can say. So I would definitely be looking at that documentary that is that will be on Netflix about that man. I can't wait. You know, you know, you know when Bret Hart has a smile on his face while he's talking about that man. I'm like, oh, we give him some true truth. It's not gonna be any sugar coating in this um uh, in this documentary. So I'm pretty certain all wrestling fans are gonna watch it. I'm pretty certain those that were wrestling fans will watch it because we all know who Vince McMahon is. Everybody knows who Vince McMahon is, and we all we 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 will be watching. So that's definitely gonna be the topic. Um, pray for WWE because it might not look good on them. But they got diehards too. As much as they talk about AEW got diehards, WWE got diehards too. They got some diehards too. People, the the difference between WWE diehards though, they they try to sound very um cliche with it. Like they they make an excuse for it. They they try to act like they're the bigger person by it. And I'm like, you one of the same. You're just like every other diehard. You're just polite with it. They're very passive aggressive. Very passive. So, but yeah, I can't wait. But uh, yeah, so that's all for tonight. That's what I had in store for me. Um, I will be, I promise y'all, I will be back here next Monday for another episode. Again, um, I want to apologize and also I want to, you know, clear up as to why I haven't been consistent on Mondays is because of my job. Okay. So if I do not have to do any mandatory overtime during this election period, I will be here. If I don't, of course, I will make an announcement like I do on Twitter. Okay. But I know for certain due to my schedule that it is no overtime for me next Monday. So I shall be here. Okay. So thank you guys for tuning in. Y'all be safe. Make sure you are registered to vote. That is important. I'm not going to, I'm going to stress it all the time until the election comes. Make sure you are registered to vote. Make sure you do your research. Um, make sure you, you know, click on credible, not blogs, credible sites to get your information from and make sure you are, you know, you're reading from actual journalists. People that went to school for journalism, not bloggers. I can be a blogger. You know what I'm saying? So make sure you know the difference between the two. It's easy to spew out misinformation because people are not going to research for themselves. So please research for yourself. Do not buy that Kim Porter book because it wasn't written from her. Okay. Her close friends and family has issued out a statement um, about that. So do not give in to that white man that used AI to write that book. Okay. 60 pages, a uh, tell all that is 60 pages, like do your common sense. Okay. People, um, thank you for tuning in. I will catch y'all next Monday. Hit my getaway. First of all, there's no such thing as white collar crime. And there's definitely no such thing as black on black crime. Crime is crime. Let me explain something to you. I don't care if you have a white collar or a tank top. If you rob me, I'm going to whoop your ass.